In this lesson, we will go over how to post-process an ABS part using traditional sanding and painting techniques. We will be finishing the Ford Mustang lithium battery holder in order to make it look great under the hood of the car. Items you will need are enamel spray paint for plastics. In this case, we will be using a matte finish spray paint so no clear coat is needed. Rust-Oleum filler primer. Craft knife or razor blade. Tweezers, which are optional. Sandpaper grits 120 up to at least 400. Painting respirator mask. Needle nose pliers, which are optional. Protective gloves and spot putty. After printing the part, check it for inconsistencies, blemishes, defects, cracks, or any other errors. Remove support material and clean up the mating points between the supports and the part. For detailed parts, you can use tweezers or needle nose pliers to get into tight areas. Make sure to wear gloves as the broken plastic pieces can be sharp. Once the support has been removed and the part has been cleaned up, take 80 grit sandpaper and begin sanding the areas that will be visible when installed in the car. There's no need to finish the parts that will not be visible. Sand the part to remove layer lines and blemishes, but go slow and take your time. Skip the small details for now, as 80 grit sandpaper can be tough on these areas. Move up to finer sandpaper, and once you move past 200, wet the sandpaper before using it. This will help prevent plastic debris and buildup within the sandpaper, as well as give the part a nicer surface finish. Switching to 400 grit, sand until the part feels and looks completely smooth. You can go up to a finer sandpaper if you would like, but it is usually overkill and it's not needed in most cases. 400 usually works fine. After sanding, wipe off the part and clean it with water in order to remove all the sanding debris. Using a controlled space with little airflow and little to no dust, place the part in a large box or on a newspaper for painting. Parts can also be hung inside of a paint booth. Here, I am using foam board to make a temporary paint booth. Shake the primer can several times. This is very important. Filler primer contains a small amount of filler in order to help further with hiding blemishes. If the can is not shaken enough, these fillers can clog the nozzle and come out in thick clumps on the part. Start off with small, even strokes from about 10 to 12 inches away from the part. You want to do several thin coats in order to prevent dripping and to achieve even paint thickness. Make sure to rotate the model in order to prevent inconsistencies. It is also very important to wait until each coat is dry before adding another. Once the primer has completely dried, inspect it to make sure you don't need to sand any blemishes that were missed in previous steps. For large holes or gaps, you can use spot putty to fill them in. Sand these areas until they are smooth, then spray the areas with primer in the same way as previous steps. Inspect the part again. If everything looks smooth, it is now ready for painting. There are many different types of paints, but we will be using what is most commonly available at local hardware and home improvement stores. Traditional enamel spray paints for plastics can be used to achieve great results. Paired with a good quality primer, most traditional spray paints can work very well. Shake the paint can several times. Using the same methods as the primer, start with light, even strokes about 10 to 12 inches above the part. Coat the part evenly and let each coat dry completely before starting another. After a couple coats, inspect the part again to check for any blemishes or inconsistencies that needed to be sanded. If you find something that needs to be redone, sand it and start the process over just in this area. After light coats of paint, continue filling in areas in order to make the entire coat more consistent. Keep spraying thin layers until it is completely filled in. Allow the part to cure for 24 hours after painting. Make sure to shake the can in between coats. This is very important in order to prevent clogs in the spray can nozzle and in order to achieve consistent results. Make sure the area where you are painting is free of dust and debris. Moving air from fans or wind can stir up dirt and dust that can ruin a paint job. Paint is toxic and harmful. Make sure to wear a mask. Use spray paint away from flammable objects. 
Bed liners and textured paint can be used in order to hide many blemishes and imperfections, including layer lines. It also gives the part a more rugged look. In order to better seal the print job, a clear coat or several coats of clear enamel can be used. This will help better protect the part, but can also leave a glossy look which may be undesirable to some. In order to clear coat the part, set it up the same way as if you were painting it. Perform two to three even light coats and make sure you are covering all of the areas you have painted. Painting an ABS part is time consuming, but if done correctly can be very rewarding. It can make a traditional 3D printed part look like something fresh out of an injection mold, and it can be worth the effort.